What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about Scream 6 in this video here again today. We'll also be talking about a new clip from Megan that surfaced online from Universal. We'll be talking about the upcoming fourth entry in the Fear Street series. And we'll be talking about the Five Nights of Freddy adaptation film that's coming that talk about some cast tidbits and some some other stuff just related to that uh just to kick it off with scream six scream six character names are slowly being revealed and the latest came from the total film magazine interview with radio silence this past week when we got that amazing teaser for the upcoming film that was showcase ghostface going into new york and causing havoc we learned that josh shigera's character is going to be named david apparently now david is shown on the subway during this teaser with the survivors but who is he and why does he get caught up in this now over the past summer of this year we got this audition tape that already gave us an insight as to this character but at the time the character was named david you know or named Derek to protect the character name but also a nod to the, the scream 2 character and the relationship that was going on between him and sydney so during this audition tape the insight we learned is that it's going to be sam's love interest he's a struggling actor apparently and these two live in the same apartment complex now that must mean something occurs in the complex to another resident that might even be connected to David himself that makes him join forces like this. Because no matter how much you might like a guy or a girl or anyone, I can't see myself joining a murder mystery with them and it has jack to do with me. So <laughs> there's something that has to go on in that apartment complex. Now, this is, this is just a Cliff Notes version of another video that I have up that is going more in depth as to who david could be and as to how i could see him being ghostface and my own idea of how i could see it playing out if they were to go down that rabbit hole of being or taking the boyfriend route again which i don't see them doing but i know so many people have already started pointing the finger at josh segura because of his past work and other projects also just his demeanor in the teaser he seems very ominous and creepy and just uh suspicious even though we know it's not him dressed as ghostface at the time that doesn't mean he isn't one of the others that are out there so just to jump into the topic of megan a new clip for megan is online and it's a lot more unsettling than the last one that was I would say pretty tame. In this clip, you have Gemma or Gemma who's talking to Katie about her eating habits and school or, or trying to talk to her. Uh, the child seems to be like not interested in hearing anything about it. She's being disobedient because when Gemma notices Megan starting to chime in saying, hey, you know, if you force children to do X, Y, Z, they'll grow up in the likelihood of them doing that as the older goes down. So Gemma was not trying to hear any of that. She's not trying to hear any of your two cents that no one asked for. Gemma decides to turn Megan down so she can talk to her niece in peace. Katie then has a minor conflict with Gemma and tries to resist her aunt's advances to parent her after trying to leave the dinner table. And when Megan notices this, she of course believes Katie to be threatened. So she causes the power to start flickering and her volume randomly turns back up loud enough for everyone, including Gemma, to hear Megan say, let go of her, let her go in reference to Katie. Now listen to this. She's only doing what she was told to do and what she was designed to do, which is protect Katie. Now, in the eyes of this artificial device who has no feelings whatsoever, they're only doing what you program to do. They are not really wrong. I've seen all seen people already online saying this thing isn't wrong. The one who is wrong here is really us. And I feel like these moments in the movie definitely will send home the message of allowing technology to be smarter than us and the dangers that come with that when we are the ones creating this stuff. And we should be careful with how we techno we let technology rule our lives because you could end up in some very dire situations like this. Obviously, this is the most extreme <laughs> out. This is the most extreme result you could think of where you have technology trying to kill you but you know it's not we have to be careful with how we let technology into our lives as i really think going to be the the main message of the movie and it's just being it's just being overly depicted with this very unrealistic not i won't say it's very unrealistic but the the stuff of course and the whole concept as of now is very unrealistic to a lot of people it, it's not that we as a society can't ever come to that point but it was a very enjoyable clip so i just want to touch on fear street next fear street is coming back with a fourth movie and no this isn't a joke for anyone who wasn't made aware of this previously the project i believe was announced earlier this year the project has reportedly found a director named chloe okuno and i believe this person is responsible for a vhs segment and the recent horror hit watcher which if you haven't checked that out yet you should go check that out there are no official plot details to share about the upcoming fourth entry in the series but fans familiar with uh 
this director's work, I, like myself included, should definitely be excited to see what happens with Fear Street 4. I remember that first trilogy when it released in the summer of 2021, I believe. It was the biggest thing, not the biggest thing, but like just a big hit for many weeks. It was just talked about all over the place. Uh, Keanu Madeira was great in the trilogy. It was a very memorable summer experience to have. And the fact, the way they released those movies was also what made them so fun to in endure with you guys on twitter and just see everybody's reaction to it and how the fandom started adapting all of these theories about where they want the project to go next if it were to come back and now it's coming back i'm eager to see what happens with this fourth movie and who they cast and if there will be any returning stars like they did with the original trilogy the treatment that fear street has gotten is something i pray to see one day with goosebumps for those of you who know goosebumps you know that both of these are rl stein projects or ips or creations of him from him the Goosebumps movies just haven't been dark. They haven't been as dark as I hoped they would be, but I love what they did with Fear Street. I hope we can get something along the lines of what's being done with Fear Street with Goosebumps in the future and see some adaptations of R.O. Stein's iconic books, but with a more darker, mature tone to them. Uh, because what they did with the Fear Street trilogy was very good. That was a very fun summer last year. I cannot wait to see what happens with this fourth project. Are you excited for it? Let me know why down in the comment section below. Or if you're not, let me know why down in the comment section below as well about that. Last thing we're going to talk about here is Five Nights at Freddy. Stu Mocker is dead, but Matthew Lillard seems to be returning to the horror genre because he and Josh Hutcherson, I believe, have joined the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie. The upcoming film is being directed by Emma Tammy and will also start filming in February out in New Orleans, if I'm not mistaken. I recall seeing somewhere it said New Orleans. Now, Mary Stewart Masterson and Piper Rubio have reportedly joined this project as well, according to One Take News. Now, as for Lillard... It's reported he is playing William Afton. Now, I'm a bit rusty on the game because it's been a while, but I have played that series. Uh, it's a very frightening series. It's known for its iconic jump scares, definitely, and all the compilations you can see on YouTube about this stuff. But he's playing William Afton. But I know this person, off of my memory, is one of the co-founders of the entertainment shop featured in the games. And they are also responsible for the animatronics, I believe, attacking the children at these venues. Um, so Lillard is back to playing a villain once again. Are you guys excited for this upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie? Are you not? Are you excited to see Matthew Lillard returning to the horror genre? Let me know why down in the comment section below. Um, this might be... I, I really don't have any real thoughts on this project because it wasn't really something that was on my radar. But now that Matthew Lillard is involved, I am intrigued. I am intrigued. I, I did enjoy that game growing up, but I just wasn't intrigued initially. But now I am. So I'll see what happens with this project. Let me know what y'all think about everything down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I have on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, and let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.